Good morning, my princess. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, everyone, this morning for uh, just being on the platform and just, you know, be expectant for what God is going to do today. I um, just want to say welcome, everyone. Um, and uh, just, we're just glorifying God as we do every morning. And we're really not just doing it uh, as a ritual. We really do mean it. We really do mean it from our hearts. We do uh, appreciate, <laughs> appreciate the goodness of God. I was in the shower and I was just thinking about the goodness of God. I said, God, all my life you have been faithful. All my life. I can think back as far as I was five. <laughs> and I remember my first day at school. I can I, I don't know if I can even think further than I was five, but that's a long, that's over 60 something, nearly 60 years ago. <laughs> but God has been faithful and uh, he has been so gracious. And um, I was thinking about yesterday, I was thinking, God, if I could, if I could change my life and start it all over again, would I do anything different? And um, I decided no. I wouldn't because, you know, I was thinking about how I was brought up in church, you know, and um, and then, and I, some people that are brought up in church, they feel like they've missed out on the world um, reveling and, you know, gallivanting and all. They think they've missed out on the, all that drug taking and all that. But I don't feel like I've missed out on that. You know, I, I, I feel like God has preserved me, preserved my life. And he has preserved my life from all of that. I could have been somewhere else right now, you know, in, in some jail cell somewhere, you know, sniffing cocaine. But, but for the grace of God, I'm just thankful to God that God will deliver those out of that situation. And they have their testimony of how God delivered them from their situation. Um, but I'm telling you, when you when you've uh, been brought up in church you like i have you know i i only know church <laughs> i only know church uh um you know i i'm not saying i'm naive about the how the world behaves but i i've never wanted to to go down that route for some reason god never allowed me to do that but i'm thanking god that um for the grace of god because um I'm still here and I'm still standing and God has renewed my my strength he has renewed my joy he has renewed my youth and he has renewed my um anything that was broken before God has mended and healed and restored so I can testify of the healing power of God that the grace of God, the mercy of God. I can testify of the comfort of God. I can testify of the peace of God. That peace that surpasses all, under, all understanding, human comprehension. When people expect you to be flat on your face, people expect you to be dead and gone, and that you'd never survive. But God said, live. You live. You will live. You will live and not die. And you will declare the glory of God. And that's what I'm doing. I'm living and I'm alive to testify of his goodness. And I want each and every one of us to think about something what God has done for us. Think about his grace. Think about his mercy. Think about where you could have been right now. You know, I could have been homeless. I, I was on the verge of being homeless on the streets. I was on the verge of dying because I, I, I needed a blood transfusion. I was on the verge of a car, several car crashes where I could have died. I could have been injured. I could have been, I could have lo lost some limbs or whatever. God preserved me from all of that. So I want us to think about the goodness of God. Think about something what God has done for you. And I want us to just give God some praise this morning. I want you to just thank him from your heart, from a grateful heart, from a thankful heart. 
God deserves praise. He, he, he created us for praise. He desires praise, a praise offering, a thanksgiving of our lips, a fruit of our lips giving thanks. From a heart of thanksgiving, we're going to praise him this morning. We're going to thank him. It's all right to come on here and to say we, we want this with our shopping list. We want A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We want one, two, three, four, five, all our prayer requests. But are we giving God the honor and praise and that is due unto his name? Are we giving him what he deserves? He deserves our, our sacrifice of praise. So I want us to just take a little time to just thank the Lord. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him that you're still alive. Thank him that you've got food on your table. Thank him that you've got a roof over your head. You're not on the street. Thank him that you can turn on your light and light come on. Thank him that you can turn on your tap and water come out. I've been on mission trips. I've been to Africa. I've been to Uganda. I've been to all these places where I've seen women have to go for miles and children have to go for miles with a bucket of um, carry water on their heads just to get water to drink and to wash and to cook and we can just switch on a tap we are so and we are not even grateful to God but I want us to take a little time to just give him some praise this morning just lift up your hearts in the hearts of gratitude this morning and give him all the honor and all the praise. Father, we glorify you. If you can unmute, I want you to uh, just to, to unmute and to give God thanks, thanksgiving, thanksgiving. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, I thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, but we know, God, it is your love that has us here this morning. It is your love that has us into a new day. It's your grace in the blood of Jesus. Father, if it hadn't been for your mercy, God, we to be here today. Lost. We thank you, God. We truly thank you. Your loving kindness and your mercy. Father, if it hadn't been for your mercy, God, where would I be right now? Only you alone know, oh God. Ah, oh, giving us oh, because everything, the water, the source of every living water. Oh, Jesus, we are so grateful to you, Lord. Mm. Coming out of that. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Father, we're so thankful to you, Jesus. Have a herbal tea. Thank you for forgiving us. We take you for granted, Lord. Thank you for the bread. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. We thank you for toast. pride, Lord. Forgive us, God. Thank you, your Lord. I have been so ungrateful at times. Because time. of my ways, because of my attitude, because thank of my berries. Thank you for neglect, because of my... Yeah, Lord, you love us so much. That is not the way, because of my thoughts. Father, you did not leave us the way we were, Father. So you took us from where we were to where we are now, Father. We are now, Father. We are now, Father. We are now, Father. We are now, so thankful to you, God. Oh, thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the earth, Lord. That you look beyond my thought and see. Father, you were you with me all Lord. my life, Father. All my life. Sometimes yet to see what you have been God. faithful to. Thank you for paying the thank you for Lord God. Father, remember, thank Lord, you took me from where I was God. Thank you for grumbling. Thank you for fruit. Worry well, over things, oh God. It's a good thing. Not thankful, Lord God. I'm alive. With the, fruit, the fruit that comes from Father, the ground. Father, you give me life. Thank you for the seeds. You give me life, Jesus. You give me strength. You give me food. Thank you for strengthening us. Thank Father, God, God, you will never see the righteous forsaken, Lord. Last thing I want to do, oh God. I will never have to go begging for bread, Jesus. But you provided, Lord Jesus. You provided for our daily needs, Lord. 
Allah, you allow. We pray. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. To our God, oh, I grateful, truly grateful. To the my heart, Lord God, to the depths of my soul. Thank you. The love for my children. But I want my heart to be. I'm standing with you, Father, in right relationship, in right fellowship with you, Father. I want to lift up my heart, lift up my mind, lift up my spirit, lift up my heart of thanksgiving to you, Lord God, with a Give you thanks, give you thanks, give you thanks. Thank you, that God, you're working with you. Father, how great thou art, how great thou art. Many mistakes and so many wrongs and judgments. Your name is Days of thinking in my Actions, oh, Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Loving me, Lord. Jesus, I give you glory. Lord, search me, Lord. See my heart today. See if there be any way to you this morning. Cleanse me from all my unrighteousness, Father. Take away any pain, any guilt, any shame, any unforgiveness, anything in my heart that will try to block my relationship with you. Wash me, Father, thoroughly. Cleanse me from my sin, God. Father, we look to you, Father. You are the source of us. You are the source of my life. You have rescued my life. Truly to you have saved my you. life, Father. You have given me you your peace, your joy, your love. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you that you've delivered me from evil. Even right now, Father, with the hedge of protection around my family, around my home, around my business, around my business, going out, my family, around my, around my children, around my, around my grandchildren. Father God, I pray your protection of us over this family, over this impact of life. Father, I thank you for your protection over us. Thank you that you bless our coming in and our going out. Oh, Father God, no matter what happens, oh God, I look to you. Oh, hallelujah. Where my help God, to you, oh God, the savior of my life. Father God, thank you for your daily to provision, you, oh God. Lord. Thank you for your daily help and strength, Lord. Oh, thank Lord, you for giving remember, us your Father, peace, God. And no matter what my Lord. life look like, there's life. Father, no matter, afraid, oh God. Father God, what we go through, Father, it's for our learning, it's for our experience, oh, Lord, it's for us to grow stronger to them, oh God. growing in you, and Lord. The God that I have given my life to you, Father, God, I and I'm able to. Truly to see you. the works of your hand, able to come to you, to you, able to see you, Lord. Give you glory, truly, Lord. truly, 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 I find some of those to blame and some of those to blame. Us, Lord God. But you've shown me, oh Lord, that no matter what happens, oh, God, Jesus. it's not because you don't care. Oh, Father, I thank you, Lord. You, oh, you are my strength. You are my strength. You are my life. You are my message. Bring change. Bring life and abundance in it. Father, help us. Help our belief. Help our belief. Help us to believe all the love that you have for All things are possible to them that believe. Help us to have faith. Hold on when all around us are letting go. On holding on. Produces hurting. Keep on holding on. Help us to strength. Keep on having mercy and compassion. Showing mercy, Lord. Oh, Father, you return. showed us mercy, so Father, we just have the same compassion, with the same mercy yes, God. we can show to others. So we show you that is let in this your situation. love continue to reign in our faith, God. Your God, God. God. God that brings the wisdom and the understanding. Oh, Lord, we look to you and your loving kindness. Shout out to the mercy. Every morning, Father, all my life to us in your loving kindness. All my life, we look to you, Lord. Father, because we got all the 
focus on give us the mind of Christ. Thanksgiving, focus on the hey, hey, hey. where do I help come from? Focus Father, on thank you for who saves friends. us. Thank you for focus on who's breath is in our life, lungs. Focus thank on thank you for the body of Christ. You know, Father, thank you for your, you can your keep kingdom. Us and sustain us. Father, focus. thank you for your Holy Spirit. Father, thank you for. But that you constantly giving us Sometimes pain, everything that we need for our lives, oh everything God, that we need for life and godliness, you provided everything. Help us, Mother God, to uh, really re realize the, 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 the glory that you from all our wrong doings, oh God, from us, all the, the power that you have been okay, um, in us. Help us to realize who we um, are in you, Father, upon us, oh God, the things that we can do us in even today. You. Brother, you cause us ask you, Lord, to rise above every situation. That you are the Lord. Father, we thank you that the enemy cannot prevail. The gates of hell cannot prevail against your church. And Father, nothing, no harm will, will come to us. Father, we thank you that nothing that you will withhold for those that walk uprightly. So we bless your holy name, Father. We give Only you glory. Alone. I know how to. We give you glory, God. We pray God. this we evening for that glory. touch, oh God, of our like relationship with you, oh God. That you deepen our souls in you this morning, oh God. Jesus. That you cover each and every one. We worship and adore. Oh Just want that you, to tell you. Want to pour you our soul this day, oh God. Anything. Can uh, enjoy. Strengthen us, Lord, Lord, and in every, 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 Let's and that we will recognize and realize peace. that anything that comes against let you, oh God, will look like you. Let your peace. Will never look like you. Let your joy will never let come your, like you. Will let your strength behave like you. Let your power. And so, Lord, help let us your glory day, oh God, in the name rest of upon every single person. Who walk in the praise and worship. Father, we invite your Holy Spirit. We invite you. Lord. We invite you, Holy and Spirit. And so we to this place. We thank you, dear God. God. We seek you your face this morning and all your benefits, oh God. You alone are worthy. We ask you to unveil you alone our deserve eyes before the glory. you, oh God. Father, we will unveil not share your glory with another. You, oh God. Father, we will not serve any foreign Holy God. You alone. For thee, oh God. You alone, Jesus. The great you alone. I am. The lover of our soul. Father, you have the Lord been good. who is our salvation. You have been great. You have the been The Lord mighty. who is mighty. And we are thankful the and Lord we are grateful evil. and we honor you oh God, and we worship we you we worship and adore you we lift up your name we lift up oh, your name we exalt you on high we so say hallowed Hallowed be your name, O God. Hallowed be your holy name. That we can look to God, we can stand glory. To God be all the praise and all the honor. All of a to you alone, Father. We give our lives. We submit ourselves. We submit our lives. We submit our homes, our hands, our feet. Remember, O God. With our body, our soul, our spirit, spirit. With you, we submit this we have with everything. You. So we lay everything our existence, oh God, in the palm of your hands. Everything, everything. We bow everything. Bow to you. We Father, we will hold nothing this morning. We will hold nothing. Father, we humble ourselves moment with you. We lift up our hearts to you. We give you praise, honor, and glory, God. That is worthy of your praise. We thank you for this morning. For the moment of our lives, as we fall afresh into one of us, according to your will and your way. I mean that falling a fresh upon us, oh God, that we will choose to come into alignment, to be 
Thank you, Jesus. Heart, mind, body, and yes, soul, oh God. Jesus. For your glory, oh God. We love you, Jesus. As we worship you this morning. We you, as we look to you this we morning. You up, as we seek your up. face and all your benefits. Lord, in come, our Lord Jesus, come, Today we pray. Lord Jesus. Giving you the come, Lord and Jesus. honor. Take oh, your place. Come, Take your place. As we come and we worship you. to the of the throne of every God. heart this morning, Lord. Bow down oh, and worship you, O oh Lord. Because we, we are grateful and oh, thankful unto the O God. Glory to God. Thank you. Because unto the O oh God, Thank you lift up our soul. Father, where oh, my soul, you we worship you your grace, Father, in you the name of Jesus. If we worship you, for your God, mercy, for who you are. We be right now? You are the great but I am, I and there you, is none Lord. like you. You are the only wise God forever and ever. You are the creator of this world, oh God. That we do create ourselves, oh God. It is you that has made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of your pasture, pastors, oh God. This into the places you want to praise to be this morning. God. Praise you that we have you have a reason have for breath. us to be here, oh God. Praise you that we, we have a reason for us to be here. Thank you that we have a reason for us to be here. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And we just want to thank you, you Lord, on, that your plan has ordered, oh God. Keep on multiplying your grace to us. Of you, oh God. Father, you keep of your on way, blessing us. You of keep your on word, blessing us. Of the life that you have obtained for us, Father, we pray for the body of Christ. That, Father, we will come truth, in unity, in will your come in the oneness, God. and will come, Lord God, God and your body, your hands, your feet, you your heart, are God, your heart, your heart, have the There's heart, have your heart, have your like heart, have your heart, have your compassion, have your love, you are, you are, you are, love. Love. You are Father, the God, we want to be like divine. you, Jesus, the we want to be like the you, Emmanuel. With Father, us. we want to walk we never like you, we want to talk forsake. like you, we want to move As like you, we want to live like you, we want to live in the glory, are. live in the power, live in the blessing, live in the light, we just want to no, take the choice, oh God, not in the dark, but live in the light, Father, we want your... the light. Uh, because we know to yeah, our help our steps come from the light of our life, and we thank you this morning, Lord. Thank you. We thank so you, so grateful to you, Lord. We thank you for your We're grace so that is sufficient. Grateful, Lord. You are more, Help us to walk this morning, oh God, more, in your grace, more in your you. love, in your joy. Help us, God. Help in, us, God. In your Help every area of weakness in your that we have. Any spirit of lack, lack, any spirit of oppression. Help us to remember that we're every strong in you. Be removed right now. Every and with that, you will be broken off of every single person of other God. We want to be free. We want to live and we want to move. So without you, you Lord, you, we, we live and move no and ways. have our being, dear God. And the ways that we have will be Lord. Hallelujah. Let your power. Thank you that you are the God. Let the fire away. of the Holy that Ghost is let it away. ignite every heart, every heart. That is righteous and holy. Away, your oh God. Flame, you. Lord. And so we thank let you this morning, oh God. Let your, your mercies upon us. Let your fire fall. Lord, anoint us this morning to listen to your Father, word glory, in your spirit, glory, oh God. Anoint us this morning to hear Father, what our brother is going to say that you have put upon his heart. Help him to God, speak, us, oh God, in the power. Us. In the truth, in Lord, the righteousness and holiness, oh that you've given it to him, Renew oh God. A right spirit within us. Help our hearts to hear it Father, because help you have anointed our hearts will, oh to hear your word, oh God. Father, we don't just want to say, Lord, 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 Lord. That we're Lord, 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 Father, we want to do the will of the Father. We want to obey in every wish way. This is the moment we have We want to respond. We want to hear. We want to move. Father, in how you are, you order that. 
in your name, in your truth, and in your righteousness, Father, you're leading us to uh, 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 us, Lord, this day we pray. Lead us to where we can you know, find green houses in you, God. where we can be fed, and where we can be warm, where we can be you, comforted, Lord, be under our feet. You do not touch our spirit, do not touch our, our mind, do not touch our flesh, oh God. Because we are covered by your blood, oh God. We are sanctified by your blood, oh God. Each and every one of us this morning. In the name of Jesus, we give glory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. To be praised. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. For the great things you have done, Father. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you praises from our lips, from our hearts, from our innermost parts, Father, with everything that is within us, with all that is within us, Lord. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, we are just praising God this morning. We're just giving God thanks. We're just giving him honor. We're just grateful to God. You know, sometimes we, we can be so ungrateful. You know, we can be ungrateful. You know, the more we get, the more we want, the more we don't have it, <laughs> the more we want. <laughs> We're not even grateful for what we've got. You know, we just want more, but we can't even see how our God is blessing us. We can't even, we're not even grateful for where he's taking us from. We're not even, we can't even see that the reason that we're still here is because of the grace of God. We can't even see that, but God requires praise he deserves praise he's deserving of much much more than we give him and uh today i just want us to always think about think about his goodness think about his love think about where you are think about where you could have been if, and just give god the thanks give him thanks give him praise you know he said that um you know, it's sometimes it's a sacrifice because you said, "Oh, well, I can't praise him when uh, you know, when things are not good." But yeah, that's the time you praise him. You give him a yet praise. A yet praise is when things are not look, looking good, but you praise him in spite of what it looks like. You praise him, knowing that your praise is a sacrifice, sacrifice of your lips. Give him praise. So it's not about our feelings. Oh, I only praise him when, I, when I'm happy. Or I only praise him when things are well. But what about if things aren't well? Are you not? Are you going to stop praising him? Let's uh, remember in all things, give him thanks. I'm just going to read Psalms um, 113. And in the meantime, Keith, if you've got a song uh, prepared, um, I'm just going to read this psalm and then Keith is going to play, play a song for us. And this is Psalms 113. I'm just, it's just a short psalm, but I'm just going to read it from the Amplified. It says, praise the Lord. <laughs> and then in brackets, it says, hallelujah. <laughs> so that's telling me hallelujah is one of the highest praise. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, hallelujah is hallelujah in every language. Hallelujah. Um, praise, pr praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 2 said, Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forever forever from the rising of the sun that's right here right in the morning where it's still dark and the sun is just rising up from the rising of the sun to the setting until it's until 
and to the setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. That's telling me from morning right through to the night when the sun goes down, when the sun sets. He's saying from the rising of the sun to the going down, his name is worthy to be praised. It says here in verse four, the Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? Who is enthroned on high? Who humbled himself to regard the heavens and the earth? Verse seven. The poor, he, sorry, verse seven. He raised the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap that he may be seated with them with princes with the princes of his people. Verse nine, last verse. He makes the barren woman live in, in the house as a joyful mother of children. And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's telling us we ought to praise him from morning till night. Just giving him thanks, giving him worship, giving him honor, and because his name is truly worthy to be praised. Keith, if you're ready now to uh, minister to us with a song, God bless you. Um, and then uh, uh, we're going to invite our speaker after that, which is Raphael, that's coming to minister to us. So, Keith, if you're there and you want, uh, you're able to play the song, uh, God bless you. Glory to God. glory be to God. I love that song so much. It's one of my one of my very favorite songs from back in the day, um, by a very good uh, artist called Andre Crouch, and I had the pleasure of being at his concerts when he used to come over to the UK, and we uh, were just um, just loving loving his songs. He wrote such passionate songs, and um, this was one of them. Lord, we need to hear from you. And uh, we, if we don't hear from you, God, what will we do? What, I mean, how can we make it? How can we cope? But we just thank God that this is, there's no other way that we can live. That we need our instructions from God. And uh, this morning we come, God, God has put um, uh, his instructions in his word. And uh, we need to... Uh, uh, there's so many great people out there that are so able to break the word down into bite size and uh, to, so that we can understand, so we can, we can learn. And God speaks to us not only through his word, but there's many ways that he speaks to us. Um, but his word is, uh, brings life this morning and we're, we are honored and we're privileged to be blessed every, um, every uh, day with God just ministering to us, speaking to us. He, he instructs us, he encourages us, he lifts us up, he gives us comfort. When we need comfort, when we're weak, he, he strengthens us. When we're down on our faces, he lifts us up. When we're in the pit, like David said, he lifts us from that pit, from that dark place. He takes us out of darkness. He brings light. So you can see God is always on the job. He's always on the, he's always on the move. There's always something that he's having to shift and rearrange and orchestrate. God, I love how God is strategic. He likes to join the dots. He likes to move things. He needs to. Sh he likes to shift things. How many accidents have we have uh, have we have um, God averted from us where we could have had had an accident here? We could have had a, something happen there, but God just moved us out of the way. He just shifts us and moves us so that we didn't get hurt. God is a good, good father. He is, he looks after his sheep, let me tell you. And today, again, I mean, we've just been having such a beautiful time learning about uh, deliverance. 
and and uh, a lot of people don't even speak about it and can you imagine when you don't speak about it the devil hides he loves it it's like he hides there and he says yes this is my home I'm staying here did you buy it you did you pay rent no <laughs> who invited you in why are we inviting the, the enemy into our house is he is he part of our family no would you uh, just let somebody come in, just kick the door down and, and come in like that? No, you would say out, get out. And that's what we do. That's what deliverance is. If you feel that oppression, if you feel that sadness, that weakness, if you feel that struggle, you know that's the enemy trying to get a foothold over you. So she says, say no, out, 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 get out. This is the door, out, out. You, you evict him. You put him out the door, you bolt up the door. And that's how we bolt it up with the word. We said, God, we speak the word and we, we bolt up the door of our hearts. We don't give him any access. We don't give no foothold to the enemy because the devil doesn't play fair. He doesn't play fair. He, is, he will chew you up. He will run you under the bus. I'm, I'm telling you, you get into the devil's uh, territory, he will chew you up, spit you out and have you for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And you're thinking, well, how did I get here? Because you opened the door. You opened the door. You, you said, come in. How did, we, how did we open the door? We open the door when we're in unforgiveness. We open the door when we're in bitterness. We open the door when we're envious. We open the door when we're jealous. We open the door. We let, the devil says, ah, oh, there's an open door. I can jump right in. But we shut the door. We shut the door and we say, out, devil. You're not going to oppress me. You're not going to, you're not going to manipulate me. That's the spirit of witchcraft when someone is controlling you. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to dictate to us. And we say, no, devil, out. That's deliverance. Out. Out in Jesus' name. That's what Jesus came to do. He was anointed with the power of the Holy Ghost. That's telling me he relied on God to anoint him with the power from on high. And that's what we do. We rely not on our own strength. We rely on the Holy Ghost. We said, Holy Ghost, I'm calling on you right now to come and intervene in this situation. And that's what Jesus did. He went about doing good, healing. He went about, he said, the Bible said he healing all that were oppressed, oppressed, there's that word again, oppressed of the devil. That means the devil can oppress us. He can't possess us. He can't get into us. And because because this is not his house. Our house is a temple of God. But the oppression, the heaviness, the weight, the, 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 the burden, the stress, the anxiety, the worry, all of these are oppressions. So we thank God that we are learning about or how to, to be free. I'm telling you, when you learn about how to be free, you're not going to tolerate no foolishness again. Because I'm telling you, I have been bound. And I'm telling you, I was bound for years. But God has set me free. And I'm telling you, I don't want to be no longer bound. I just want to be free. And, and I, did, I pray, Holy Spirit, that any oppression... Any, any weight, any baggage, any stress, any anxiety, any frustration that any minute will bring to anybody on this platform, and those that are not even on the platform, anybody from the body of Christ, that they will know that we have the authority to cast the devil out and to resist the devil, rebuke him, and he has to flee from us. So, Father, I thank you that, Lord God, you are teaching us and you are bringing things to our, uh, our, our understanding. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is what we, that we need. So, Lord, we need more of that. We need to hear from you, Lord. And uh, uh, just glorifying God for all of you. Thank God for uh, uh, all of you this morning. And uh, 
uh, Raphael is going to be coming to speak to us. And I want you to get your hearts ready. I know those of you have that came on early, you were, we were praising the Lord. We were thanking him. We were lifting him up. And uh, God is, God has inhabited. He has received our praise. He has received our, our worship. So now God is, will pour back into us. So Raphael, if you're ready, I just want to introduce you for uh, those of you who don't know Raphael. He is a, a lovely brother. He loves the Lord. God is, God is, uh, I call him John the Baptist. <laughs> because when I think about John the Baptist, <laughs> I think about um, that one crying in the wilderness. You know, they, they said all kinds of things about John. But, you know, John was doing what he was doing and he was worshiping. He was preparing the way for the master. And he certainly did. When Jesus came to be baptized, he, he recognized that he was the one. He recognized, he said, you're the, you're the one. You're the one that I'm preaching about. You know, you're the one. Can you imagine? He said, I am not even worthy to um, even undo your, sh your shoelaces. I'm not even worthy to, to, to take you into the, into the water. And because he, 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 he reverenced that, that the holy presence of God. And, and uh, 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 but John was doing what he was. He was a forerunner. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, God will send, raise up his forerunners. And we are all forerunners. We are all forerunners, to, to be honest, because we are setting, the, 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 we are setting the, the, the road ahead for our children and our grandchildren. You know, we are preparing the road. You know, God's made us mothers. He made us fathers. He made us uncles. He made us aunties. He made us godfathers. No matter if, you, if you're not even a biological father, it doesn't matter. You are, you are paving the way. Other people can come and stand on our shoulders and say, yes, this one paved the way. When I think about my mom and my dad and all the, the, all the saints that have gone on, before the great men, the Billy Grahams, the Morris Sorellas, uh, all of these great men have come and paved the way for us. And we're just, we're just on, standing on their shoulders right now. They are just, you know, they have paved the way for us. And we have to pave the way for our next generation that they will not have, they will not have a godless society, but they will know God. They will know God that they'll be able to pass it on to their children and their children's children. So I just want us to be a constant blessing wherever we are, whatever we do, whatever God called us to do, whatever we are, whatever our work, our job, us, wherever we go, we can plant that seed that it will grow and it will manifest and grow and make good, become good fruit. And then we become fruit producers. I want people to eat my fruit and say, wow, that was delicious. That was beautiful because God makes all things beautiful in his time. And it's only a matter of time uh, that, 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 that God is going to, you know, really continue to just ca cause this fire to burn and blaze and let it blaze throughout all the land and people will come and bow and cry unto God and beg to receive Jesus because there's a coming a time where uh, people will be um, begging to serve God and we know that we are the ones that uh, God has ordained so we thank God so um right now Raphael are you ready are you ready? Yes, I am. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let us welcome Raphael. God bless you, Raphael. I was just giving you a few more minutes to just <laughs> get yourself <laughs> sorted out. <laughs> but praise be to God. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Raphael, this morning. God bless welcome, you. Welcome, Raphael. Bye. Good Thank morning. You, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Donna and everybody else. Um, uh, Miss yeah. Let me see all your names. Amen. Thank God for every one of you this morning. Praise God. God is so good, you know. He really is good to us. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. Amen. Just carry on giving him praise for a few more minutes before I minister the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. You, Go ahead. Jesus. Hallelujah. Just, just give him some more praise. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Father, we worship you. We thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, L
feel alive afresh this Jesus, day. Thank you, Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, yes, comforter, God. healer, Jesus. deliverer, Jesus. friend of friends. Ah, feel alive this morning. Let the joy that flows from you be your strength to many this morning. Let it be so, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' name, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We bless Jesus, you. Jesus. Yes, let it be so, Father. Yes, Lord. Let it be so. Let it be so. Let your people soak. 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 In your presence this morning. For David declares that in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. In his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Oh, that's pleasures. Let us, your people, soak, soak, soak in your presence. Draw from your presence. Draw from you this morning. Sweet Holy Spirit, comforter. Let it be this morning. Let it be peace in every area of our lives. Peace. 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 Because your words tell us that you will keep those whose minds stayed on you. Perfect peace. Let mine be on Christ and not on the problems or the situations. Let our minds be on Christ, who is the answer for all things pertaining to this world. Let the peace of God keep us. Let it be so this morning. Let not the minds of your daughters or your sons be fixed on their situations or problems, circumstance. But let their minds be fixed on you. Let them see you in their workplace. Let them see you in the schools. Let them see you in the family, in the home, in the marriages. Let them see you in their finance. Let them see you in every area of their lives. So Father, let it be so this morning that your peace will reign in us for all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God. Uh, amen. Every one of us this morning, we come before the Thank you. Father, the mighty God who is and is and shall be forevermore. Greetings again. I love God's presence. Thank you, Jesus. I love the Holy Spirit. I love my Father. I love my Lord Jesus. Without them, I cannot live or breathe and have my being. If it was not for Jesus, we wouldn't be here today. If it was not for the Father who gave his son, we would not be here today. If it was not for the Holy Spirit that convicts us and set us free from the power of sin, we would not be here today. If it was not for the Holy Spirit that ministers to us every hour, every moment, every second of the day, we'd be most miserable people. Oh, Jesus. But we thank God for the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised and prayed that the Father will send and he has sent him and he dwells in us richly to help us to live a life of victory, to live a life in abundance in this dark world. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, this morning. Use this mouth again to minister to the hearts of your people. This I ask in the wonderful name of Jesus. And let the Father be glorified in me and in us. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
that wonderful song by our brother Andre Crouch, also Sandra, I believe it's his sister or his wife, I'm not sure, but there's a similar, same song sung by Sandra Crouch, and I asked our brother Keith to play it this morning, and he's played the one that Andrea, uh, Andre uh, uh, sang, but it's the same song, just that I believe it's his sister sings it, uh, or his wife sings uh, her own version, but it's wonderful because the words are the same, the lyrics are the same. Um, I was speaking as I sat down uh, when uh, Pastor Grace uh, asked, if, you know, if I could minister, I sat down again and I said, Lord, what can I say? And that song came to me, I need a word from you. <laughs> we need to hear from you. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? Because sometimes we can come and share what we feel or we like, or we can talk about things that subjects in the bible that we like I, I can talk about things that i like to talk about you know but this what is the lord saying to us is what matters what is the lord saying to us right now we need a word from god i believe every day we need a word from god because every day is new every day is new every day is new because you never get a day that is similar to the day before never you always find that every day something different takes place we might eat the same meal Sometimes we eat the same breakfast, we have the same lunch, same sandwich. But every day something different takes place in life. Hallelujah. Because you see, I love the way God makes everything in its priority. God has abundance of plants and trees and birds and fishes. And God doesn't like the same old, same old. God likes a variety of things. He's made some of us to be tall, some of us to be shorter, some of us to be different size, skin color, skin tone, different languages. God has made all things to be the way he is because he, that's the way he wants it. Some may say, well, God uh, scattered the nations by giving them different languages because they were building the Tower of Baal, but still God gave different languages. He could have just given two or three languages, but God has given thousands of different languages. Amen. Because he loves the variety. You know, hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. And so we thank God this morning that we can be in his presence. Thank God for Pastor Grace and Chris and all of you, every one of you this morning. You know, I acknowledge everyone, you know, from uh, Keith to, to Cheryl, Cheryl S, Cheryl C S, I should say, Cheryl P, Seema, Daniel, Donna, Fiona, Carleen, Johnson, Keith again, uh, Maya, hallelujah, oh glory to God, Patricia, uh, Troan, uh, Vogue, and uh, Mother Brown, amen, Mother Brown, and every one of you that may be listening in the background on the same app or the same uh, device, because I know sometimes people listen in the background, amen, so thank God for every one of you this morning. What is God saying to us? What is the Lord, what is his instruction? We need a word from the Lord. We need to hear from him. And as we were praising God, as we were worshiping, as we were waiting in the presence of God, I just sense an awesome presence of the spirit of God, you know, and I, above all, when God's presence comes, there's such a peace and love that comes, hallelujah, because that's who God is, he's love, he's peace, he's joy, hallelujah, oh, and that gives us strength, that gives us hope, hallelujah, that propels us to know him even more, not just to do things for him, not just to live for him, but it causes us to want to know him. Why? That's why David says that, you know, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. The pleasure of God on his right hand is Jesus. Because the Bible says that Jesus sitteth on the right hand of the Father in heaven, making intercessions for us. Ah, uh, so in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And on his right hand, there is pleasure. And there's so much pleasure in Jesus. Hallelujah. It is because of him we can live and breathe and have our being. Amen. He is the bishop. Hallelujah. Of my soul. Hi, and your soul. So without Jesus, we will not have a life. And I keep saying this, and I said this to somebody the other day, actually, and I keep saying it nowadays. People are getting so miserable. And I'm sure some of you will acknowledge that and say, yes, yeah, true. It's, people are getting so miserable nowadays, even Christians because of the pressures of life, because of circumstances and situations. And if you don't have Christ, you'll be most miserable. The Bible does tell us that. <laughs> yeah, we don't, if people don't have Christ, they're most miserable. And I, and I begin to find that Christians are getting so miserable because they're just Christians. 
There's a difference of having a relationship with God and being a Christian. There's a difference of having a relationship with God and being religious. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, we're going to look at the word of God this morning. And so we better know God. We better know who Christ is. We better know who Christ is. The time we're living in right now, and this, as uh, Pastor Grace said earlier, uh, Pastor Chris has been teaching on deliverance. <laughs> You know, and and I'm sure many of you, uh, I'm sure Chris has really made it clear that what brings deliverance is the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the word of God. You can't have deliverance without the word. The, you know, it goes hand in hand because it's the word of God that brings deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't cast the demons out if you don't know the word of God. You don't know the power of the word. And the Bible says that Jesus is the word, is the living word. So we can cast out demons, we can find our deliverance. It's not just deliver, not just casting out demons. And I'm sure Chris is covering those areas. It's not just the demons that we get delivered from, but sometimes we have bad habits, attitude, bad fruits, as Pastor Chris uh, Grace was saying earlier. Sometimes there's some bad fruits, rotten fruits that we need to get rid of. It doesn't need to, uh, um, it's not demons, it's just our attitude and personalities and characters that needs to be uh, scrubbed out. You know, Jesus says, uh, talk about purging, purging the, the, the fruit, the, the vine, purging, purging the, the branches, purging and cleaning off and getting all that nonsense and rubbish from our lives. And sometimes it just takes a word to do that. Amen. So let's look at the word of God this morning. Um, because it's very important. And there's something else um, before I go into the word. And I, I thank God for that. I mean, it's a privilege, uh, Grace. It's really a privilege. You're not the first person that calls me. Uh, the type of John the Baptist. I was uh, ministering in Croydon once, where this is my um, territory. Croydon is my territory. And, uh, I, I can boastfully in God say that Croydon is mine. I've been, Croydon has been claimed for Jesus, and it's my hunting ground, and nobody can't take that away from me. And so um, one day I was preaching in Croydon, and uh, uh, a woman of God passed by, and the woman looked at me and started to shout, John the Baptist! You're like unto John the Baptist. And she's shouting and looking at me and says, you are like unto John the Baptist. God has called you unto John the Baptist. And she went away. The woman just disappeared. <laughs> and uh, there's another bishop, you know, um, uh, Bishop Damien. Uh, once uh, Pastor Damien came on and said to me, Raphael, you're like John the Baptist. I said, I know. I give God the glory and the praise. So I get people calling me that. I said, you're just like the John the Baptist. One crying out in the wilderness. <laughs> And it's a wonderful privilege. But I always say to people, uh, just my ministry, just the way God has called me, we're all called differently. You know, some people are called with a soft voice to minister comfort and joy and peace to people. Some, you know, come uh, just by just giving. There are different administrations of the spirit. Some just like to give. And when they give, they really give. Hallelujah. Some, you know, come with a prophecy and some can sing. And everybody have their gifts and talents but i use what god has given me i've got the gift of the gap so i use that amen so this morning we're going to look at them first timothy chapter four yeah first timothy chapter four and it's um of course paul writing to the young pastor timothy and he's telling them about the last days warning timothy and us about the last days and certain things that will take place in the time we're living so there's a, quite a lot in that but i'm just going to put it briefly and short as I heard Grace was saying, sometimes, you know, we can put things in the package and, and still get the whole uh, thing that what we, what God is saying. Amen. So it says in the first Timothy chapter four, and it says, I'm going to read from verse one. I'm reading from the Good News Bible. So I've got, I've got various versions of Bibles. I thank God for Grace and Chris. Again, they, they blessed me with some Bibles some time ago. We study Bibles, I don't know if Grace remembers, but I've got <laughs> I've got a few different versions of Bibles that I've been blessed with over the years. You know, Chris and Grace has been the, the, one of those couples who have blessed me with some beautiful Bibles. The Spirit says clearly that some people will abandon, abandon the faith in the latter times. <laughs> they will obey lying spirits and follow the teachings of demons. Such teachings are spread by deceitful liars whose conscience are dead as if burned with a hot iron. Such people teach that it is wrong to marry and to eat certain foods. But God created those foods to be eaten after a prayer of thanks by those who are believers and have come to know the truth. 
<laughs> everything that God has created is good. Nothing is to be rejected. But everything is to be received with a prayer of thanks because the word of God and the prayer make it acceptable to God. Now, in that, there's a revelation here, but that's not my main purpose tonight, uh, this morning. But if some of you would read that and, and you know, you'll get an understanding that God said everything is created is good. Yeah, but you give it thanks and pray and you eat the food. Yeah, there's some things that uh, not only food alone, but there's certain things in this world that some people say, I'm not touching that, it's worldly. Well, who told you it was worldly? If God has made it, how is it worldly? <laughs> if God has created everything for, he, he, for us for pleasure, why would you say it's wicked and it's evil, it's not good? We've got to get the understanding when we read the scriptures that God, there are many things that God has created for us and it's profitable for us. Amen. And so we, because of the world standard of what man says, we go by what man says. We don't go by what God says. So somebody says, well, uh, um, don't eat meat, for example. I'm just using that as an example, but I'm going to move on in a minute. So if I don't eat meat, don't eat this, don't eat pork, don't eat that, don't eat this. Well, that's what the world says. But what is God saying? You know, what is God saying? And, you know, we have an example of Peter. Peter uh, had a vision and a four-legged beast come down on the sheet and then there were, of course, there was pig on there, there was pork on there, and there was different animals on there, four-legged hoof animals. And Peter says, as a Jew, says, I've never ate nothing unclean. No, 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 I'm not going to eat that. And God says to him, listen, Peter, don't call anything I've created unclean. Yeah? <laughs> Obviously, God was giving him a revelation concerning the Gentiles, because Peter didn't like the Gentiles. You know, Peter, as far as the Jews were concerned, the Gentiles were unclean people. But So God was saying, no, 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 the Gentiles are not unclean. You know, they're my creation, they're my people, they're human beings, they belong to me. I want you to go minister to them. So that was the revelation there for Peter. But in, in that, there was two points that God was saying. God was saying to Peter, you have been a Jew. Yeah, that's your religious idea. Yeah, that's what you all got up from, you know, under the law. You all, uh, uh, you know, Moses gave you all these this, these uh, uh, regulations and so on. Because, because you lot, the hardness of your hearts. <laughs> it was like with the divorce. I mean, God said, Jesus said to most of the people, the reason why God and Moses wrote a bill of divorce because of the hardness of your hearts, but it was not meant to be like that. So there were a lot of things that, that God had to allow them to institute or God put in place because of the hardness of man's heart. But God says, no, everything he's created is good. Everything he's, he's made is good. And we should bless it and eat it. But I'm not saying that, by the way, I'm not saying that we all should go and eat whatever, right? I'm just saying that there's nothing that we should not call nasty, okay? We should not call the thing that God has created nasty or evil and wicked. No, we don't do that. Amen. And so let's move on. If verse six, then I'm gonna, there's a particular verse that I'm going to stop on. If you give these instructions to the brothers, you'll be a good servant of Christ Jesus. Ooh. Mm. So that means, am I, am I doing the right thing? I suppose I am. <laughs> if you give these instructions to the brothers, you'll be a good servant of Christ Jesus. As you feed yourself spiritually on the words of faith. Ah, right? I'm getting to the point now, right? Okay, this is where I'm going to get to. Okay, you'll be a good servant of Christ as you feed yourself spiritually on the words of faith and of the true teaching which you have followed. But keep away from those godless legends which are not worth telling. Keep yourselves in training for a godly life. Physical exercise has some value, but spiritual exercise is valuable in every way because it promises life both for the present and for the future. Okay, I'm going to read that again, verse 7. But keep away from those godless legends or myths, okay, myths or, 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 or devilish teachings or, or, or religious teachings, right? Keep away from those godless legends which are not worth telling. Keep yourselves in training for a godly life. In other words, the word of God, practice living the word of God, not just you alone, but me, or every one of us. That includes me. We must keep in training our, our spirit, not the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about our spirit, our human spirit, in training it to live a godly life in Christ. Okay, very important. Now we have physical exercise, which some of us do, some of you do, I do, nowadays, because I don't want to put too much uh, fat around my stomach. The wife don't like that. Okay, so physical exercise has some value, but spiritual exercise 
is valuable in every way. Spiritual exercise is more important. The more we spend time praying, the more we spend time in the word, the more we spend time meditating and reflecting on the word, it's more, prof it's more profitable for us now and for the future. What does it mean by the future? It's profitable, it's profitable for us now because we're living in this world and this life. We need to, to know the word of God that we can speak against the powers of the enemy. We can, we can speak life into bad situations. We can speak life into dead things. Okay, we need to do the word of God because there's a greatest example, right? There's many examples in the scriptures, but I use this one. Jesus went into the wilderness to fast and to be tempted of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. When Jesus came out of the wilderness, Satan came and tempted him. What did Jesus use? What did Jesus say? He used the word. In three occasions, Jesus used the word. It, it, you know, that's it. He used the word. Satan telling him, oh, if you be the son of God, turn those stones into bread. Jesus made it clear. Man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God shall a man live. That's very important. We need to get that into our spirits, every one of us. It's the word. It's not what pastors say, or what this one said, or this bishop said, or this one said, and blah, blah, what I read in some book. Somebody wrote this book and I read it. It's good. Let me see. I don't read other people's books as such. Now, everybody has their own choice. I'm just saying me. And because the Holy Ghost don't have me to read other people's books as much. Yeah. Because when you have your own personal testimony, you know for yourself, you're not going by somebody else's experience. You're going by your own. And the best experience in life is when you have your own experiences. See, reading books encourage us to, 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 to go for more for God. Reading books encourage us to, 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 to have a great desire for God and, and relationship and, and, and pushes us to have our own personal experiences. That's what reading books do. It pushes us to do better. It pushes us to have our own personal experiences. But I don't live by the people's experiences. I want to live by the experiences of the word of God. I want to live by the experiences of Jesus. I want to live by that which I read and experience in the word of God. Okay, that's what I want to live by. I don't want to live by somebody else's secondhand emotions or secondhand experiences. I don't want that. Yeah, I'm saying this is me personally, right? But I'm encouraging you all to have your own personal experiences in God, have your own testimonies. I remember the days in church, people be testifying of what somebody else's testimony is. I don't want to hear somebody else's testimony. I want to hear your testimony. I want to hear what God did for you, not what God did for John Smith 20, 30 years ago. People, sometimes some people live by somebody else's testimony and somebody else's experience. Come on, what about your personal experience? Tell me what God has done for you. So anyway, I don't want to go into that so much. But our experiences in God makes us who we are. Our personal experience is a personal relationship. Amen? Very important. So Jesus spoke the word. Man cannot live by bread alone. You know, not just by the physical, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. All right, and Satan comes again, right? If you will bow down and worship me, I'll give you all this. Give me all this what? So Jesus gave him the word again. Only God should be worshipped and no other. It's in the scripture, it's there. God told Moses when he gave, he said, I am God, the only God, and only I should be worshipped, okay? The only true and living God should be worshipped, no other. They shall have no other gods beside me. God made it clear to Moses to tell the people. So Satan knows all that. And then the, he, go, he comes again and he says, um, he says, uh, alone, the third one was the third one. Yes, throw yourself down. It is written that God will give you charge over you. He'll give you angels charge over you. Let's dash your foot against any stone. So Jesus says, do not tempt the Lord thy God, that is also written. See, so every time Satan came, Jesus used the word. Now, what am I saying? It is important we know the word of God for ourselves. We need to test the word of God for ourselves. Okay? It's good we hear preachers. It's good we hear that one. So please don't get me wrong when I say, you know, don't go by what people say. What I'm saying is when somebody gives you us a word, or when somebody's preaching, when somebody's teaching, we need to go and find out what has been taught is right, is correct. Ask the Holy Spirit, is this what the person's teaching is right? Is it in line up with your word? Okay, because there's so much things you're going to listen. There's so much things being put out here today in this world. There's so much things. Yeah, I don't care if it's coming from the great, I don't care if it's coming from Pope, uh, uh, Pope Francis or whatever. I don't care. But Pope Francis is coming out some rubbish. I don't want to hear from Pope Francis. I know he's the Pope, so what? Okay. He's coming out and saying man can marry man and woman can marry woman and all these things there. And there's so much going on right now. I don't want to go into the details. They're meeting to have their meetings 
the one world church, one world religion, and it, it, they're all gathering together from various leaders from different religion coming together because they want to form a one world religion. All this nonsense. That's not that's not that's that's not what God wants for us. There's only one church. That's the church of the Jesus Christ. The body of Christ is one church of different nations, different tongues. Yeah? And that type of religious order, God is not in it. That's of the Antichrist, by the way. But we, we that's another another day for that. But we need to know the word of God. Okay, so verse 11, I'm going to go to, okay, verse 9. I don't want to jump ahead of the word. This is a true saying, to be completely accepted and believed. We struggle and work hard because we have are placed in hope in the living God, who is the savior of all, and especially of those who believe. I, what is Paul saying here? Paul is saying, basically, look, we need to work hard. Sometimes we don't believe we should work hard as people of God. You know, we want God to do it for us, you know, because he's a blessed God. You know, he's a loving God. He's a kind God. You know, he's a soft God. Yeah, you, 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 some of you notice what I said. He's a soft God. We make God to be a softy. Yeah? Yeah, we make God to be a softy. We only look at the parts of the Bible where we see God's blessings only. Yeah, where God pours down rain and God showers us with loving things and kindness and God... God is so wonderful. Oh, God is so this. Oh, God is this. God is that. that that's, that's Christianity. We make God to be so wonderful, which he is. Yes, 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 yes. But um, Jesus said this. We need to have a, read the other parts of the scriptures. The Bible says any man in Christ or woman must suffer persecution. We don't talk about things like that. There's persecution to live for God, you know. Jesus said to the disciples before he left, they're going to have many troubles in this world. <laughs> we don't read those parts of the Bible. We just want to read the nice bits. Oh, you know, the lovely bits, you know. The one that speaks about the blessing, blessings, 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 blessings. No, I'm talking that the whole experience having to talk because we need to see the other side because we need to be well balanced. That's why Paul says about the exercise. Yeah, we have to be well balanced, really well balanced. We, we speak so much about blessings as people of God, Christians, blessing, blessings, always blessing, 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 blessings, all the nice things. And when Satan licks us, we wonder, oh, what happened? What, oh, what happened? Oh, pastor, pray for me. Oh, pastor, we're all crying out. Oh, come on, people. Please, I'm, I'm serious here. Please, Paul, your apostle, makes it clear. We must not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Paul is writing here to Timothy, one of the days that we're living in. We need to read such scriptures. Don't just talk about blessings and blessings and blessings. Come on. We are blessed. We know we are blessed. What about the kingdom of God? Matthew 6, 33. I don't see, I don't see Matthew 6, 33 on the platform this morning, but Matthew 6, 33. I love that brother, you know. I love him so much. Eh? Matthew 6, 33. We need to focus on things like that. I was, I was speaking to a sister the other day, right? It's a sister I've known for years. And um, going back in the days, she's still not married yet. So I said to her, listen, what are you doing? She goes, what do you mean, right? Said, what are you doing for God? So you're still waiting for the husband. You're still looking. She goes, yeah, I'm looking, waiting for the husband. I said, yeah. As you present yourself ready for the husband, did you present yourself to be a good wife material? Have you present yourself, you know, ready to have children if that's what you want when you get your husband? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course I want to have children. I want to get married, man. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> I just go to church. <laughs> just go to church. That's all you do. <laughs> church work, church work. I said, oh. I said, have you thought about Matthew 6, 33? She goes, what's that? Huh? I said, it's a scripture. Matthew 6, 33. Do you know what? I was sad in my spirit. I'm very humorous sometimes, but I was sad in my spirit. Because she's not been seeking the kingdom, just doing the religious thing every time. Go to work, go to, go to a prayer meeting, go to church every Sunday. Same old, same old. But not even seeking a soul to be saved. <laughs> Not seeking to see somebody come to know Jesus. And yet you're waiting for a husband. I hope you all, some of you are getting that. You have no concern for the kingdom, but yet you're looking for God to give you a husband. And if God gives you that husband, you're happy, that's it. You think souls are going to come into your eyeballs? You think souls will be the thing you'll be looking for when you get the husband? You think God's stupid? If you can't see souls now, you think when God gives you a husband, you're going to see souls to be saved. Huh. I'm speaking strong words here. I know it might seem strong to you all. Some of you could take, but please believe it, take it. Yeah. 
Matthew 6, 33, and I always say to people, it's a key of life for me. The whole Bible is my life, but Matthew 6, 33 stands out and speaks to me very clearly. If we can't see the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, why would God add these things to us that we need, that we want? Because the world seeks after these things. The world seeks for husband and wife. The world seeks for car. The world seeks for job. The world seeks for house. The world seeks for land. The world seeks for things as well. So what difference are we if we're seeking for those things? What, how, what difference are we to the people in the world? So Jesus said, no, don't be like the heathens. Don't be like the world. Don't seek after and chase after you know, money, 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 and wealth, and money, and money, and you want a husband, you want a car, you want this, you want this, you want that. He says, seek you first. Come on, people. Okay? Where am I going? I'm going because it's the instructions. If you can, we can read reading, verse 11. Give these instructions and these teachings. <laughs> verse 11, all right? Give them these instructions and teachings. You see, I'm doing what the Holy Ghost sent me to do. I'm giving you all the right information. I'm not teaching any, any other gospel. I'm not giving you all anything else. I'm not coming with a prosperity message that you're all going to feel good, make you all feel good and say, yes, Raph gave me a beautiful word this morning. You know, I'm so blessed and highly favored of God. Whoa. I hear that all the time. How you doing, sis? How you doing, bro? Oh, I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored of God. I say, really? Are you ready for heaven? And that's when I get a different look. That is when I get a different look. Oh, what do you mean by that, rap? I said, yeah, you're highly favored. I'm no, we're blessed. You're highly favored. You've got a good job. You've got a good car. You've got a husband. You've got a wife or whatever. You know, everything's going well with you. But how's your relationship with God? Um, 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 anyway, let's do not let anyone look down on you because you're young. Well, I'm not young anyway. I'm quite I'm, I'm of age at the moment, but I'm still looking well, thank God. But be an example for the believers in your speech, your conduct, your love, faith, and purity. And these are the areas that I'm working on, all right? And these are the areas we need to be working on, okay? Our character, our personality, to be like Christ in this world. That's what we should be focusing on. Okay, very important. Okay, but then I'm going to jump over to Matthew 6. And then we're going to pray because I, I need to do some more prayers. So we're going to do Matthew 6. Sorry, not Matthew 6. First Timothy 6. Okay, listen to this, yeah? First Timothy chapter six. I'll jump to first Timothy chapter six. So you know that far away. Not just um just next door. All right. A couple of scriptures, uh, chapters. Okay. From verse from verse um now let me let's read from verse um three. Whoever teaches a different doctrine, okay, from verse 3, 1 Timothy chapter 6, from verse 3, whoever teaches a different doctrine does not agree with the true word of our Lord Jesus Christ and with the teachings of our religion or the teachings of our Lord is fallen with pride and knows nothing. Yeah? When I say certain things like that to people, they get upset and I say, well, I'm speaking from the scripture. I'm not being rude. I'm not being disrespectful. I'm only telling you what the Bible says. Because that's just the way I am. That's the way the Lord uses me. I speak to people with all respect, and I, I use the word of God to speak to them. Because then there's no, you see, when you use the word of God to speak with people, it's either they take it or leave it, but you know you've given them the word of God, okay? Yeah, so you've not given it, you're not giving them anything of yourselves, but you've given what the word of God says. So it's either they take it or leave it. But because it's the word of God, we know it will work sooner or later. It will work because the word of God tells me that uh, when God's word goes forth into the heart of a man or person or woman or whoever, boy or girl, it will never return on, unto him void, but it will accomplish the purpose where to it has been sent and prospered in. So I know when I speak the word of God into somebody's life, I know it will get in there sooner or later because it will never return unto him void. So that's why I like to use the word of God. I have exercised or trained myself in that way, amen, over the years that I speak for what the word of God says, because I don't give my opinion, yeah? If somebody asks me something spiritual, I don't give my own personal opinions. I always give it from the scripture. If you ask me something about the world, then I can, I can give my personal experience or my personal view. But when it comes to the spiritual side of things, I give it from the word as the spirit of God leads me. He has an, un okay, let's carry on reading. He has an unhealthy desire to argue and quarrel about words. And I get that sometimes. I get Christians who argue about scripture. And I said, I don't have time to argue. Right? I don't argue with the word of God. We can have a discussion. We can study. We can have a, uh, what's the word? We can reason concerning scriptures. But I'm not going to argue with you. 
never argue with people over scriptures, please. I don't care who they are, whether they be uh, Muslim, uh, Seventh-day Adventist, or witnesses, or whatever religion. It doesn't matter. Don't argue with people with scripture. Don't argue. If it's going to go into an argument, just walk away. Yeah? We don't argue over scripture. We, we can reason, we can chat, we can have a deep, uh, discussion, we can share. But when it comes to arguing, that's not of God. Argument is not of God. He has an unhealthy desire to argue and crawl about words, and, and this brings on jealousy, disputes, insults, evil suspicions, <clears throat> and constant arguments from people whose minds do not function and who no longer have the truth. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why I stay away. Because you ain't going to get the truth to a person who just want to be argumentative. How are you going to get in the word if they're argumentative? How are you going to get in the word if they want to fight against you? It doesn't work. That's why Paul encourages us to turn away from such people. Don't, don't waste your time. It sounds it's strong words, but it's the truth. Yeah? Because you ain't going to get to somebody who's just arguing because they have their own belief. You know, they have their own religion. They have their own gods. And you're arguing. What are you going to argue about? Arguing that ain't going to change nothing. You speak the word and you leave it. And, but you don't argue. You move on. Speak the word, leave it, and move on, okay? They think their religion is a way to become rich. Uh, let me get to this part now. Verse 5. And constant arguments from people whose minds do not function and who no longer have the truth. Are you? you hear that? They think that religion is, the, is a way to become rich. Does that sound very very, um, very um, familiar to some of you? You hear that? Verse 5. And constant arguments from people whose minds not function and who no longer have the truth, they think that religion is a way to become rich. <laughs> when I read that in this uh, version, I laughed because it's so obvious, isn't it, today, how prosperity gospel, they call it, has uh, made many TV evangelists rich, many mega church leaders rich. You know, they've got mansions and jet planes. And, and somebody said to me the other day, oh, Raphael, what's wrong with that? God don't want us to be poor, you know? I said, of course God don't want us to be poor. But... Um, he wants us, he wants to meet our needs. That's very important. There's a difference between needs and wants. God wants us to find our needs. Our needs. Yeah, it's nothing wrong having a nice car, a nice house. And if you want to have a mansion because you've got a big family, nothing wrong with that. If you're going to entertain people, if you're going to put the poor and live with you, that's nothing wrong with that. If you've got a mansion and you want to bring people into your house to live with you, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but what is the first thing that God is asking us to seek for? It's the kingdom. And righteousness, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know, me and my wife had a discussion because it's always been her vision to help the poor, you know, to provide for, for, for people a place, the homeless, they can sleep. If, you know, once we have the money, we're going to find a building and big enough to buy and then convert it and people, the homeless can come and live. You know, be, be a place of refuge for the homeless you know, uh, and help those, uh, for example, we love to travel. We, we've been traveling for years, you know, and I'm sure Grace and Chris, I've heard him say that many times. We love to travel as well. And we've traveled different parts of the world and we love traveling anyway. And we, we, we have this vision that we want to, when we have money, we're going to set up a little uh, organization where we can pay for people to go on holidays, children with their mothers, you know, or the fathers to go on holidays you know, reasonable price holidays. We pay for it and they go and enjoy themselves. And these are the visions that, that we have, you know, one day before Jesus comes that we will see established, you know. And, and so it's, when God gives us money, it's not always about ourselves. We think because, you know, God doesn't want us to be poor. Not, of course not. But he doesn't want us to be so rich and filthy rich that we just have the money until we turn full with it. We don't know what to do with the money, you know. And, um, but we've got to be careful about seeking money and wealth what's the reason what's the purpose the greatest thing the bible says uh, what is the profit of man or woman to, to gain the whole world and to lose their soul you know and jesus gave a beautiful example and i shared this the other day you know the rich man had so much the young man that was so wealthy came to jesus and he says well i got it I, you know i fast once a week I, i've given things away you know to people to poor i go into the temple and i put my little offering and, and pay my tithes you know so jesus says go okay that's good you know, he said he kept the commandments. Jesus said, okay, that's good. Go away and give everything that you have then and come and follow me. Go away, give everything you have and follow me. The young boy went away so so saddened because he was very wealthy. So he couldn't give, he couldn't give away everything and follow Jesus. That was very hard for him. And then Jesus then goes on to say that it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. 
but this is the part god but jesus said but with god it is possible in other words only god can help a rich man what does that mean <laughs> let, me, let me give you a little insight and this is what the holy spirit told me some time ago satan for years has been promoting wealth in the church physical wealth financial wealth for the church you know why because when the church have money they're not going to be crying to god so much they don't need god's help and satan will get a lot of people trapped that way and he's doing a good job of that right now because when you have money when you have riches you have everything in this world you don't depend on god so much it doesn't mean we have to be poor but satan knows the trick the more christians have they don't really need god so jesus made it clear yeah he said blessed are the poor in spirit right he, didn't, he wasn't talking about poor physically he talked about poor in spirit which means humble in spirit humble in spirit able to live and having less and still happy content paul says whatever i have or not i'm still content jesus said don't even worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has its own problems <laughs> I don't worry about tomorrow's food. I don't worry about tomorrow's this. I, I think about today. Today, I'm alive today. I don't know about tomorrow. Well, I don't know what tomorrow. I can hope to whatever tomorrow's going to bring, but I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. We can plan for tomorrow. We don't know if tomorrow's going to be the way we want it to be. So I live for today. You know that saying? One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. You all know that song, isn't it? Yeah. And it's scriptural. Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. People are hoarding up riches and treasures because they think they're going to live here forever and Jesus is about to come. I'm sure, I'm, 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 I'm praying that what I'm telling you all there, that you're listening because I'm not, I'm not hammering people. I'm giving you all the word. It may be hammerous to some of you because the word of God comes like a hammer. So please look for the scripture. <laughs> God's word can come like a hammer to some people. So it might sound strong and heavy to some of you. Yeah, because, but I'm, I'm being honest. It's the truth. Seek the kingdom and his righteousness. It's better to be poor in spirit than to be seeking after riches and, of this world. Because when you die, it's going to stay here. It's not going nowhere. <coughs> I'm going to come to the end when I pray. Right, verse 11. Verse 6, sorry. First Timothy 6, verse 6, I'm going to pray after I'm going to end here. <coughs> well, religion does not make a person very rich. Well, religion does not uh, sorry well religion does make a person very rich if he is satisfied with what he has <laughs> verse seven what he what did he bring into the world what did he bring to the world okay question verse seven what did he did what did we bring into the world nothing okay so i'm gonna read this again verse six because i'm reading from the um, good news bible so it's a little bit different to the king james and the amplified okay verse six well, that's verse six. I'm reading verse six again. Well, religion does make a person very rich if he is satisfied with what he has. Did you get that? Yeah. Okay. If you're satisfied with the material things, if you're satisfied with the worldly things, if you're satisfied with the house, you're satisfied with the car, you're satisfied with all the good wages you're getting, the promotion and all that, if you're satisfied with that, and that's what makes you to be a child of God, then God be with you. That's all I would say. Okay. Verse seven. What did we bring into the world? Nothing. As I said earlier, you ain't going to take it nowhere. It's in a stadium rot. Or maybe you might pass it down to your family. But then Jesus is coming soon anyway. So they may not get time to enjoy it. Or it might go for the cat and the dog. That's okay. The cat, the cat and the dog can have it. What did we bring into this world? Nothing. What can we take out of the world? Nothing. So then, if we have food and clothes, that should be enough for us. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and are caught in a trap of many foolish and harmful desires, which pull them down to rain and destruction. For the love of money is a source of all kinds of evil. I'm going to stop here. Amen. Just going to do a short prayer, Pastor Grace, and then I'm going to hand over to you. <clears throat> Father, we thank you. We bless you this morning. I've shared your word. 
given instructions because that's what uh, you put in my spirit this morning to give instructions and i've given instructions for holy living instructions for us to really know you not to seek the things of the world not to be like the people of the world who are seeking to settle in this world because that's this is their home this is not my home and this is not our home we're only passing through our home is in heaven hallelujah hmm. jesus you're coming to take us home shortly and so while we are here you said we must work while it's day <clears throat> there's works of righteousness to be done hallelujah you said in uh, revelation chapter 22 verse 12 that behold you're coming quickly to reward every man according to what his works shall be you're coming to reward those who are holy let them be holy still you're coming to reward those that are righteous so let them be righteous still you're coming to reward those that are filthy unholy let there be a filthy and unholy still because you said behold i come quickly to reward every man according to their works hallelujah works of righteousness works of holiness and so lord we are seeking the kingdom lord we are seeking to know you we're seeking that others will know you we're seeking and we're going to store up treasures in heaven you said where are treasures is that's where our heart will be also so lord my <clears throat> treasures is in heaven because that's where my heart is i'm seeking the kingdom of heaven i'm seeking that you will say well done my good and faithful servant enter into your rest oh i'm seeking to hear such words lord i'm seeking to please you not man i'm seeking the kingdom and not the things of the world for paul tells us that we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds we must not be conformed to this world but ye but be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may please that which is the perfect will of god uh, but unfortunately for many they have taken on the things the ways of the world even some churches uh, uh, the way they run the church the structure is like a business organization like the world uh, so we have seen how the system of the world has influenced the church in many ways uh, but jesus this morning we are the kingdom minded people on this platform Form. We are kingdom-minded people. We are seeking the kingdom and all your righteousness. We are seeking to have a deeper relationship with you. We are seeking to see our sons and daughters go into a relationship with you, much so more than any other time. We are seeking, we are seeking that many will be healed and delivered and set free. We are seeking, Lord, that we will be a people of power and authority in this world. We are seeking that we will be the mouthpiece that we will be the ones lord that you can use to bring glory to your name we are seeking to be true worshipers that jesus spoke about that we are lord we are seeking the kingdom of god and all his righteousness and so father this morning holy spirit of god move within us to revive us we ask for revival in the land but revival starts with those that know you it starts within us it starts within our hearts and once you have touched our hearts then revival begin to spread out within the nations within our community where we are but revival must start in us as a people it starts within us for it is written yes lord if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven and I will forgive them of their sins and that I will heal the land. Oh my God, it starts with us. If your people, if your people that are called by your name, you make it so clear, those that know you, those that are called by your name, you're not talking about everybody, but you're talking about a particular people that know you, the ecclesia, those that are called out, those that have a relationship with you. If your people that are called by your name will humble themselves and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways 
then we will see a revival in the land because you will come and heal the land. There will be a revival in Croydon when the people of Croydon that truly know you will begin to turn and seek you and then you will hear and then you will forgive them of their sins and then you will heal Croydon. You will heal London. You will heal the nation as your people begin to turn and see you. And so, Father, we thank you this morning in the name of Jesus. We don't want to seek money first. We don't want to seek our own desires first. We don't want to seek to see ourselves uh, surrounded with great, wonderful material things, but we want to seek your kingdom first and your righteousness. And then you said we will have those things. Hallelujah. Those things will be added to us. And so, Lord, this last prayer, I pray for those who are seeking for husbands or wives. Lord, the same thing applies, that they'll begin to seek the kingdom, whatever the seeking the kingdom is in their area in their hearts in their lives because it's not just about preaching on the streets but lord it's not just about giving out tracks but it's whatever you have given us to do that we are doing it hallelujah whichever area that you've called us that we are obedient to it and so father i pray this morning that whatever you have given us to do that we will do it firstly that will be obedient to you that will begin to seek you that which you desire for us that will bring glory to your name <laughs> oh my god that our eyes will fix on you ah paul the apostle before he became the apostle paul saul was struck down on your appearance of his horse and the first thing Paul said, because he knew in his heart <laughs> that he couldn't go any further. And Paul says, when he was struck down by you, with the brightness of your appearance, Paul fell off his horse. And the first thing that came out of Paul's mouth was this. Paul says, Lord, what is it you have me to do for you? <laughs> what is it you have me to do for you? <laughs> Paul didn't say, well... <laughs> I was a bad man and blah, blah, blah. I went into self-pity. Paul says, Lord, I surrender. In other words, I give over completely to you. What is it you have me to do? That's the first thing that came out of Paul's mouth. Same with Isaiah. With the, day, the day that King Uzziah died, Isaiah said, whoa, it's me. It's me. I'm a man with unclean lips. It's me. It's me, Lord. <laughs> And after the angel had sanctified the mouth of Isaiah and touched his tongue, the question was asked, who will go for us? Isaiah was first or quick to say, here I am, send me, I will go. <laughs> and so, Father, this morning, many are seeking for husbands and wives. Many are seeking for things, material things. Many are seeking to have this and have that. But are they seeking you first and the kingdom? Are they seeking your righteousness and the kingdom? And so, Father, I pray this morning that your will will be done. I've given the instructions by your spirit power this morning, and I leave it in the hands of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you and I bless you for this opportunity this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Over to you. Oh, amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for that prayer. That was a heartfelt prayer for each and every one of us. And thank you for your word of encouragement. Thank you for your devotion this morning. And uh, um, God has truly spoken. Um, we ask this through that song, Lord. We need a word from you. We need to hear from you. Lord, if we don't hear from you, what would we do? What, 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 how would we, how will we advance? How would we flourish? How will we prosper if we don't get that word from you? And this morning, God has truly spoken to us, to our hearts. You know, we, we can, it's all about putting our priorities in place. Seek first the kingdom of God. 
what is his kingdom. Seek the things that God desires of us. Seek to walk the God walk faithfully and true. Seek his righteousness. Seek after God. Seek his seek his um the, that that anointing that 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 destiny that purpose for why we are here we are all here by divine appointment we are all here not by accident we were here to accomplish something that only you can do only no one else can do it but you seek to know god's word and i was so challenged by that Rafa, when you were saying that um you know we need to use the word some of us we don't know the word i mean i'm one of those people as, as well that i have to hold my hand up i need to read my word more i need to know what the word of god says that i can use the word as you said when you're speaking you speak the scriptures you speak god's word nobody can't argue with that because that's not your words, that's God's words. Let them argue with God. And like you said, we shouldn't get into any argument. You know, we, we're not here to, you know, get into any punch up or fist fight or over the word of God. We just, we just, we just, you know, we just, we're here to just let the word accomplish what it's sent forth to do. Because the word is alive. It's alive. It's not just, it's not just words on a page it's not just words on a page it actually has a life it has it goes forth and it changes atmospheres it it goes forth and it burns it cleans it cuts it divides that's what the word of god said it it divides and it cuts and it severs and it destroys it goes it's like a it's like the word of god is like you know when you put bleach into something and it just cleanses it it's a cleansing washing of the word that's what the scripture says we want that washing of the word you know you put in your put on the washing machine you put your det detergent in there you put your soap in there if you put bleach you know that that washing is going to come out clean and that's what the word does it cleanses us and it removes those spots and wrinkles uh, and, the, and those hard to reach areas. <laughs> the word will reach those. So Raphael, thank you uh, for this morning. And truly, wow. Jesus used the word when the devil came to him. He said, it is written. And he was able to quote it, what the word said. The devil couldn't argue. But the devil couldn't argue with the word because it is written. So we need to know what is written because, you know, if we don't know the word, we can be deceived. And many are being deceived today. And, and it's really sad. And uh, many have sold out. Many have sold their soul to the devil. And, uh, you know, and we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we know what the word of God says. And that we will not be deceived. We will not be, uh, we will not, we will not, anybody will not come and confuse us. We know what the word of God says. And so, yes, we need to study to show ourselves more approved of God. And, and that's, that, that's been my uh, desire um, to really get into God's word more. And I pray that all of us has received a word from God this morning that will change us change that's what we need we need a change of attitude change of uh, of 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 going uh, down a, a slippery path we need to go go on the right path on the road of righteousness and truly when we put god first it's so true um all things will be added onto you because god honors that god god sees that our heart is after him. And there's no good thing he said he would withhold from us. He will not withhold any good thing. I mean, you imagine you have your children and, uh, uh, you know, they're doing, they're doing well at school. They're doing so good. You just want to give them a big treat. 
you know, even we have our pets, our, our animals, we give them a treat. <laughs> God wants to give us treats. He wants to reward us for our faithfulness. So thank you, Raphael. And, um, you know, we've just been so blessed this morning and I hope you've received something and you take something away. It's, um, it's, it's, it's not good enough just to hear, but it's, it's for God to really touch those, touch your heart to say, you know what? I'm going to get into my word more. That's what I received today. I'm going to get into my word more. I'm going to learn what the word of God is saying. And I'm going to, and I'm going to know that I hit, I'm going to write it on the tablets of my heart. That's where God wants his word to be written in our hearts, on the tablets of our hearts. And um, what you, there's one thing you said when you was praying, uh, Raphael, that really touched me is when you said when Paul was um, hit, was um, on the road to Damascus and God spoke to him. The first thing he says, what will you have me to do? What will you have me to do? You know, that should be the question on each and every one of our hearts. Lord, what would you have me to do? And I want to pray this morning for every single person because this is the question that we need to be asking. Lord, what would you have me to do? What do you want me to do for you? How can I be more effective? How can I be more productive? Lord, how can I just move in the gifts and, the, and in the power and in the anointing? What, what, what do you want me to do for you? So this is, this is what touched my heart this morning, that we, wanna, we just want what we want. We just want to do what we want and go where we want. But Lord, God, this morning, uh, the, you're speaking to our every heart. What would you have me to do? And that should be the cry of every heart this morning. So, Father, I thank you for Raphael. Thank you for the worship this morning, Father. You truly have received our worship. Father, you truly have received our praise. Father, you truly have received our thanksgiving. You truly have received a heartfelt prayer that we've uh, prayed to you this morning, Father God. And Lord, today we receive the word that will change our life forever. And Father, we want to really hear what you're saying into our spirit this morning. And Father, you want us to put our priorities in place. We want, Lord God, not only what we want. You, obviously, you have desires for us. You have, you have hopes for us. You want to give us everything that we desire. But Father, what would you have us to do for you? Father, let this be the cry of our hearts this morning, Father God that Lord, we will look to you and see how we can seek your kingdom, seek your righteousness, seek souls, seek the lost, seek to help people, seek to, to be a giver, seek to be a helper, seek to, to come alongside the, the lost and the hungry, the poor, the lame, the blind, whatever it is, whatever we can do, Father, help us that, Father, we do it as unto you, O oh God. So, Father, I thank you that you've equipped us with all the tools and all the abilities. But, Father, we seek you, your face, Lord. We seek your kingdom. We seek your righteousness, Father. Less of us, Lord, more of you. More of you this morning, Lord. Father, less, less of flesh. Less of flesh, Father God. Fleshy desires, but more of your spirit more of your spirit, Father, that, Lord, that you will, that we will move in the earth. We will make a difference, Father God. We will impact lives. Father God, that lives will be touched, lives will be changed, lives will be healed, set free because of what you would have us to do for you. Father, help us to be willing 
you said that we have to be willing and obedient. So help us to be willing, Father God. Help us to have our hearts and our desires focused after you, Lord God. And Father, we know that, Lord, you will pour out your blessings upon us because we have been a good and faithful servant, Lord. And you will pour out your blessings upon us. And uh, Father, there's no good thing that you will withhold. You said you will not withhold any good thing from those that walk uprightly. So Father, help us to walk upright and in right standing, in right relationship with you. Father, no good thing will you withhold from us. So Father, all of those that are desiring, um, Father God, to, 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 to achieve um, their goals in life and their, Lord God, you will bring the right people, the right partner, the right life partner, the right person that will be able to add to our lives, not take away, but add to our lives in Lord God. So Father, we thank you that Lord, that you will send uh, those that have been waiting on husbands and wives and those that are waiting on the fruit of the womb, children and whatever, Lord, you will add, Father God, every good gift, because all good gifts comes from you, God. And Father, we would truly, Father, be rewarded um, because we have seek your kingdom first so father we thank you for this word and that uh, lord that our hearts will be in the right place father we thank you father god for any single person that's designed for any new job or new move or new um uh, desire in their heart father we know that you place those desires there and Father God, I pray that you will not disappoint. That Father God, you will bring it to pass. It will manifest in each and every one of our lives, Father. We will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Father, we will see your goodness. Uh, Father, as you it's your heart to, to bless us. You really want to bless us. You really want to, Father God, that bless us in our body, in our spirit, and in our soul. You said you wish above all things that we prosper and be in health as our, and even as our soul prospers, Father, you want us to prosper in every area of our life. So, Father, we, we commit everything to you. We surrender our lives to you. We, can, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand that, Lord, you will exalt us. And, Father, we thank you that, Lord God, you are a good, good Father. And, Father, that you... You love us unconditionally. And Father, you love us more. You want to give us so much more than you, we even desire, Father. But Lord, we have to make sure that, Lord, we, 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 we abide by what you, you uh, abide by what you say in your word. And Father God, and Lord God, we know that, Lord God, our lives will be transformed. Our lives will be propelled. Our lives will be fruitful. Our lives will be healthy. Our lives will be rich. Our, heart, our hearts will be uh, nourished and flourished. And we will be like that tree, Father, that is planted by the rivers of living waters. Our leaves will not wither, Father God, but we will continue to grow and produce much fruit. Father, I thank you for this word this morning. Thank you for Rappo. Thank you for his home. Thank you for his family. Thank you for his children. Thank you for his wife. Thank you for his ministry. Thank you that you multiply more grace to him, Lord. And Father God, I pray that we even, Lord, in his ministry, that dear God, as he speaks the word, Father, life will come. Salvation will come. Souls will come. Lives will be touched and changed, Father God, because, Father God, he has been obedient to do your will, oh God. And help us, oh God, that we will do your will, oh Father. You said oh, many are called, three are chosen, but Father, we just want to do the will of the Father. So Father, help us to be obedient, help us to be faithful, help us to be loyal, help us to be uh, a truly, uh, our heart's desire is after you, Lord. 
So Lord, I thank you again for this day, for every single person on this platform, that Father God, their day has started great and it will continue to be great, Father. Anything that they put their hand to, it will flourish, it will have good success. Father, because of your grace, because of your mercy, because of your love, Father God, because we seek you first, in the early in the morning, we seek your presence. Father, because of that, Father God, things will go well with us. Things will be uh, 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 flourished for us. Things will open, doors will open for us, Father God. Father, and for our family, for our children, for our business, for our work, for our friends, for our, our, fa- our, our extended families, Father God, and for the body of Christ. We speak life to uh, every dead situation right now. We speak, Father God, covering over every single life and every single home and every single uh, represented person on this platform. And those that are not here, Father, we speak life to them as well. We speak health to them. We speak strength to them. We send hope to them, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray for our nation, we pray for our our king, we pray for our government. Father, we pray that, Lord God, that we will live a peaceable life on this earth. Father, we remember those that are suffering, persecuted in lands, and Lord, those that are people that are at war right now, those that are experiencing war and bombing. Father God, we pray, uh, Lord, Father God, for peace, peace in our land, Lord. You said, if your people, if your people would are called by your name, would humble ourselves and pray, Father, seek your face, you said, then we will hear from heaven. And then, Lord, you will heal our land. So, Lord, help us to, Lord God, that we seek your face and humble ourselves, that, Lord God, that we can speak healing to our land. And, Father, we speak peace to, especially in Ukraine, Father, where they're experiencing war, they're experiencing uh, 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 turmoil and, uh, and all kind of things that are, uh, that are terrible, Father. We speak peace to our nation, Lord. Cover us all under your precious blood, dear God, as we continue to trust in you. We tell you thanks this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen to God, be the glory for all the great things he has done. Oh, bless you everyone. Keith, if you're, if you're available, you can play us out. We have just been so blessed and we are grateful to God for this word, this one. And then we're gonna, not gonna hear, be hearers only. We're gonna take instruction. Ask God, what is it, God, you, have, you want me to do for you? What is it? How do you want me to, to help? to advance your kingdom. That is what it's all about. Ah, Glory to God. Keith, if you're available to play us out, we're gonna leave rejoicing and take this word and let it change us. Let it change us. I know it's it's already uh, challenged me to uh, really read more of my scriptures, read about all what God has in store for us and that we will not be ignorant. Uh, We will not, we will be be, uh, knowledgeable about what God is saying, what God wants. So God bless you everyone. Have an amazing day. It's gonna be an awesome, productive day. I feel it in the spirit right now. I feel, I feel the, the, the anointing of God. The blessings of God. There's an open heaven right here. There's an open heaven over over every single one of us. And uh, the blessings of God is just going to continue to be multiplied to us. So, Keith, if you're ready, if not, I'm just going to say a goodbye here. and Just continue to uh, pray for each other. And... uh, Continue to lift up the name of the Lord of Jesus. And God will show us if we ask. If we ask him, he will show us what it is he wants us to do. Because he's, uh, he's, 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 he's equipped us for every good work. And he will show us exactly what, which, which way we should go and what, what we should do. He wants to. He wants to make sure that we're, we're, we're following his instructions. And that our hearts are open, our hearts are willing, and that we are obedient. Thank you all for joining this morning. Thank you again, Raphael. Bless you. Go ahead, Keith.